Mirza Shahab Ud bin Baig Muhammad Khan Karam, the 5th of January 1592 to the 22nd of January 1666, better known by his regnal name Shah Jahan Urdu. Shah ya Persian, Shah ja King of the World, was the fifth Mughal emperor who reigned from 1628 to 1658. Shah Jahan was widely considered to be the most competent of Emperor Jahangir's four sons, and after Jahangir's death in late 1627, when a war of succession ensued, Shah Jahan emerged victorious. He put to death all of his rivals for the throne and crowned himself emperor in January 1628 in Agra under the regnal title Shah Jahan which was originally given to him as a princely title. Although an able military commander, Shah Jahan is perhaps best remembered for his architectural achievements. The period of his reign is widely considered to be the golden age of Mughal architecture. Shah Jahan commissioned many monuments, the best known of which is the Taj Mahal in Agra, which entombs his wife Mumtaz Mahal. In September 1657, Shah Jahan fell seriously ill, which set off a war of succession among his four sons, in which his third son Aurangzeb, emerged victorious. Shah Jahan recovered from his illness, but Aurangzeb put his father under house arrest in Agra Fort from July 1658 until his death in January 1666. On 31 July 1658, Aurangzeb crowned himself emperor under the title, Alamgir. The Mughal Empire reached the pinnacle of its glory during Shah Jahan's reign and he is widely considered to be one of the greatest Mughal emperors. <laughs> Early life Birth <laughs> 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 Shahab Ud Din Muhammad Karam was born on 5 January 1592 in Lahore, in modern-day Pakistan, and was the third son of Prince Salim later known as Jahangir upon his accession. His mother was a Rajput princess from Marwar called Princess Jagat Gosaini her official name in Mughal chronicles was Bilki Makani. The name, Karam. Joyous was chosen for the young prince by his grandfather, Emperor Akbar, with whom the young prince shared a close relationship. Just prior to Karam's birth, a soothsayer had reportedly predicted to the childless Empress Rukaya Sultan Begum, Akbar's first wife and chief consort, that the still unborn child was destined for imperial greatness. So, when Karam was born in 1592 and was only six days old, Akbar ordered that the prince be taken away from his mother and handed him over to Rukaya so that he could grow up under her care, and Akbar could fulfill his wife's wish to raise a Mughal emperor. Rukaya assumed the primary responsibility for Karam's upbringing and he grew up under her care. The two shared a close relationship with each other as Jahangir noted in his memoirs that Rukaya had loved his son, Karam a thousand times more than if he had been her own son. Karam remained with her until he had turned almost 14. After Akbar's death in 1605, the young prince was allowed to return to his father's household, and thus, be closer to his biological mother. Education <inaudible> 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 As a child, Karam received a broad education befitting his status as a Mughal prince, which included martial training and exposure to a wide variety of cultural arts, such as poetry and music, most of which was inculcated, according to court chroniclers, by Akbar and Rukaya. In 1605, as Akbar lay on his deathbed, Karam, who at this point was 13, remained by his bedside and refused to move even after his mother tried to retrieve him. Given the politically uncertain times immediately preceding Akbar's death, Karam was in a fair amount of physical danger of harm by political opponents of his father, and his conduct at this time can be understood as a precursor to the bravery that he would later be known for. Khusra <laughs> Rebellion In 1605, his father succeeded to the throne. After crushing a rebellion by Prince Khusrau, Karam remained distant from the court politics and intrigues in the immediate aftermath of that event, which was apparently a conscious decision on Jahangir's part. As the third son, Karam did not challenge the two major power blocks of the time, his father's and his step brothers, thus, he enjoyed the benefits of imperial protection and luxury while being allowed to continue with his education and training. This relatively quiet and stable period of his life allowed Karam to build his own support base in the Mughal court, which would be useful later on in his life.
Topic: <laughs> Nur Jahan. Due to the long period of tensions between his father and step-brother, Karam began to drift closer to his father and over time started to be considered the de facto heir apparent by court chroniclers. This status was given official sanction when Jahangir granted the Sarkar of Hisar Feroza, which had traditionally been the fief of the heir apparent, to Karam in 1608. Nur Jahan was an intelligent and beautiful lady with an excellent educational background. She was an active participant in the decisions made by Jahangir. Slowly and gradually, she became the actual power behind the throne, as Jahangir became more indulgent in wine and opium. Coins began to be struck containing her name along with Jahangir's name. Her near and dear relatives acquired important positions in the Mughal court, termed as the Nur Jahan Junta by historians. After the death of Jahangir in 1627, Nur Jahan was put under house arrest and led a quiet life. Marriages <inaudible> In 1607, Karam became engaged to Arjumand Banu Begum who is also known as Mumtaz Mahal Persian for the chosen one of the palace. They met in their youth. They were about 14 and 15 when they engaged, and five years later they got married. The young girl belonged to an illustrious Persian noble family that had been serving Mughal emperors since the reign of Akbar. The family's patriarch was Mirza Jiyas Beg, who was also known by his title Itimid Ud Dalla or Pillar of the State. He had been Jahangir's finance minister and his son, Asaf Khan, Arjumand Banu's father, played an important role in the Mughal court, eventually serving as chief minister. Her aunt was the Empress Nur Jahan and is thought to have played matchmaker in arranging the marriage. The prince would have to wait five years before he was married in 1612, on a date selected by the court astrologers as most conducive to ensuring a happy marriage. This was an unusually long engagement for the time. However, Shah Jahan first married Princess Kandahara Begum, the daughter of a great grandson of Shah Ismail I of Persia, with whom he had a daughter, his first child. Politically speaking, the betrothal allowed Karam to be considered as having officially entered manhood, and he was granted several jagger, including Hisar Feroz and Inobal to a military rank of 8,000, which allowed him to take on official functions of state, an important step in establishing his own claim to the throne. In 1612, aged 20, Karam married Arjumand Banu Begum, who became known by the title Mumtaz Mahal, on the auspicious date chosen by court astrologers. The marriage was a happy one and Karam remained devoted to her. She bore him fourteen children, out of whom seven survived into adulthood. In addition, Karam had two children from his first two wives, though there was genuine love between the two. Arjumand Banu Begum was a politically astute woman and served as a crucial advisor and confidant to her husband. Later on, as empress, Mumtaz Mahal wielded immense power, such as being consulted by her husband in state matters and being responsible for the imperial seal, which allowed her to review official documents in their final draft. Mumtaz Mahal died at age 37 the 7th of July 1631 while giving birth to Gauhara Begum in Burhanpur. She died of a postpartum hemorrhage, which caused considerable blood loss after a painful labor of 30 hours. Contemporary historians note that Princess Jahanara, aged 17, was so distressed by her mother's pain that she started distributing gems to the poor, hoping for divine intervention, and Shah Jahan was noted as being paralyzed by grief and weeping fits. Her body was temporarily buried in a walled pleasure garden known as Zainabad, originally constructed by Shah Jahan's uncle Prince Daniel along the Tapti River. Her death had a profound impact on Shah Jahan's personality and inspired the construction of the Taj Mahal, where she was later reburied. In the intervening years, Karam had taken eight other wives, among which Kandahara Begum M. the 12th of December 1609, and Is Un Nisa Begum M. the 3rd of September 1617, the daughters of Muzaffar Husayn Mirza Safawi and Shanawaz Khan, son of Abdul Rahim Khan the First Khana, respectively. But according to court chroniclers, his relationship with his other wives was more out of political consideration, and they enjoyed only the status of being royal wives. <laughs> <laughs> Military commander Prince Karam showed extraordinary military talent. 
The first occasion for Karam to test his military prowess was during the Mughal campaign against the Rajput state of Mewar, which had been a hostile force to the Mughals since Akbar's reign. In 1614, commanding an army numbering around 200,000, Karam began the offensive against the Rajput kingdom. After a year of a harsh war of attrition, Maharana Amar Singh I surrendered conditionally to the Mughal forces and became a vassal state of the Mughal Empire. In 1617, Karam was directed to deal with the Lodi in the Deccan to secure the empire's southern borders and to restore imperial control over the region. His successes in these conflicts led to Jahangir granting him the title of Shah Jahan, Persian, King of the World and raised his military rank and allowed him a special throne in his durbar, an unprecedented honor for a prince, thus further solidifying his status as crown prince. Edward S. Holden writes, he was flattered by some, envied by others, loved by none. <inaudible> Rebel prince Inheritance of power and wealth in the Mughal Empire was not determined through primogeniture, but by princely sons competing to achieve military successes and consolidating their power at court. This often led to rebellions and wars of succession. As a result, a complex political climate surrounded the Mughal court in Karam's formative years. In 1611 his father married Nur Jahan, the widowed daughter of a Persian noble. She rapidly became an important member of Jahangir's court and, together with her brother Asaf Khan, wielded considerable influence. Arjumand was Asaf Khan's daughter and her marriage to Karam consolidated Nur Jahan and Asaf Khan's positions at court. Court intrigues, however, including Nur Jahan's decision to have her daughter from her first marriage wed Prince Karam's youngest brother Shahzada Shariar and her support for his claim to the throne led to much internal division. Prince Karam resented the influence Nur Jahan held over his father and was angered at having to play second fiddle to her favorite Shariar, his half-brother and her son-in-law. When the Persians besieged Kandahar, Nur Jahan was at the helm of the affairs. She ordered Prince Karam to march for Kandahar, but he refused. As a result of Prince Karam's refusal to obey Nur Jahan's orders, Kandahar was lost to the Persians after a 45-day siege. Prince Karam feared that in his absence Nur Jahan would attempt to poison his father against him and convince Jahangir to name Shariar the heir in his place. This fear brought Prince Karam to rebel against his father rather than fight against the Persians. In 1622 Prince Karam raised an army with the support of Mahabat Khan and marched against his father and Nur Jahan. He was defeated at Bailokpur in March 1623. Later he took refuge in Udaipur Mewar with Maharaja Karan Singh II. He was first lodged in Delwada Ki Haveli and subsequently shifted to Jagmander Palace on his request. Prince Karam exchanged his turban with Maharana and that turban is still preserved in Pratap Museum, Udaipur, R. V. Samani 1976. It is believed that mosaic work of Jagmander inspired him to use mosaic work in Taj Mahal of Agra. His rebellion did not succeed and Karam was forced to submit unconditionally. Although the prince was forgiven for his errors in 1626, tensions between Nur Jahan and her stepson continued to grow beneath the surface. Upon the death of Jahangir in 1627, the wazir Asaf Khan, who had long been a quiet partisan of Prince Karam, acted with unexpected forcefulness and determination to forestall his sister the Empress Nur Jahan's plans to place Prince Shariar on the throne. He put Nur Jahan in close confinement, he obtained control of Prince Karam's three sons who were under her care. Asaf Khan also managed palace intrigues to ensure Prince Karam's succession the throne. Prince Karam succeeded to the Mughal throne as Abu Ud Muzaffar Shihab Ud Din Muhammad Sahib Ud Quran Ud Tani Shah Jahan Padshah Ghazi Urdu, Shab al-Din Mehmd Krem or Shah Jahan, his regnal name is divided into various parts. Shihab Ud Din mean Star of the Faith. Sahib al Quran Ud Tani means, Second Lord of the Happy Conjunction of Jupiter and Venus. Shah Jahan means, King of the World, alluding to his pride in his Timurid roots and his ambitions. More epithets showed his secular and religious duties. He was also Caliphate Panahi, Refuge of the Caliphate, but Zil i Alahi, or the Shadow of God on Earth. His first act as ruler was to execute his chief rivals and imprison his stepmother Nur Jahan. Upon Shah Jahan's orders several executions took place on 23 January 1628. 
Those put to death included his own brother Shariar, his nephews Dawar and Garshasp, sons of Shah Jahan's previously executed brother Prince Khusrau, and his cousins Tamoras and Hoshang, sons of the late Prince Daniel. This allowed Shah Jahan to rule his empire without contention. Governorship <inaudible> 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 Deccan or Dravidas 1611–1612 Bihar 1613–1614 Gujarat 1614–1618 Delhi 1623–1627 West Bengal 1624–1625 Bihar 1625–1627 Reign 1628 to 1658 Administration of the Mughal Empire Evidence from the reign of Shah Jahan states that in 1648 the army consisted of 911,400 infantry, musketeers, and artillery men, and 185,000 sowars commanded by princes and nobles. During his reign the Marwari horse was introduced, becoming Shah Jahan's favorite, and various Mughal cannons were mass-produced in the Jagar fort. Under his rule, the empire became a huge military machine and the nobles and their contingents multiplied almost fourfold, as did the demands for more revenue from their citizens. But due to his measures in the financial and commercial fields, it was a period of general stability. The administration was centralized and court affairs systematized. The Mughal Empire continued to expand moderately during his reign as his sons commanded large armies on different fronts. India at the time was a rich centre of the arts, crafts and architecture, and some of the best of the architects, artisans, craftsmen, painters and writers of the world resided in Shah Jahan's empire. According to economist Angus Madison, Mughal-era India's share of global gross domestic product GDP grew from 22.7% in 1600 to 24.4% in 1700, surpassing China to become the world's largest. Topic. Rajput rebellions Shah Jahan annexed the Rajput kingdoms of Baglana, Mewar and Bundelkhand. He then chose his 16-year-old son Aurangzeb to serve in his place and subdue the rebellion by the Bundela Rajputs led by Jujar Singh. Topic. Famine of 1630 A famine broke out in 1630–32 in Deccan, Gujarat and Khandesh as a result of three main crop failures. Two million died of starvation, grocers sold dogs' flesh and mixed powdered bones with flour. Parents ate their own children. Some villages were completely destroyed, their streets filled with human corpses. In response to the devastation, Shah Jahan set up langar free kitchens for the victims of the famine. Topic. Relations with the Deccan Sultanates In 1632, Shah Jahan captured the fortress at Dalatabad, Maharashtra and imprisoned Husayn Shah of the Nizam Shahi Kingdom of Ahmednagar. Golconda submitted in 1635 and then Bijapur in 1636. Shah Jahan appointed Aurangzeb as viceroy of the Deccan, consisting of Khandesh, Barar, Telangana, and Dalatabad. During his viceroyalty, Aurangzeb conquered Baglana, then Golconda in 1656, and then Bijapur in 1657. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Sikh rebellion led by Guru Hargobind. A rebellion of the Sikhs led by Guru Hargobind took place, and in return, Shah Jahan ordered the destruction of the Sikh temple in Lahore. Skirmishes were fought at Rohila 1621, Amritsar 1634, Lahira 1634, Kartarpur 1635 and elsewhere. Topic: <laughs> Relations with the Safavid dynasty. 
Shah Jahan and his sons captured the city of Kandahar in 1638 from the Safavids, prompting the retaliation of the Persians led by their powerful ruler Abbas II of Persia, who recaptured it in 1649. The Mughal armies were unable to recapture it despite repeated sieges during the Mughal Safavid War. Shah Jahan also expanded the Mughal Empire to the west beyond the Khyber Pass to Ghazna and Kandahar. Relations with the Ottoman Empire While he was encamped in Baghdad, the Ottoman Sultan Murad IV met Shah Jahan's ambassadors, Mir Zarif and Mir Baraka, who presented 1,000 pieces of finely embroidered cloth and even armor. Murad IV presented them with the finest weapons, saddles and kaftans and ordered his forces to accompany the Mughals to the port of Basra, where they set sail to Thatta and finally Surat. War with Portuguese Shah Jahan gave orders in 1631 to Qasim Khan, the Mughal viceroy of Bengal, to drive out the Portuguese from their trading post at Port Hooghly. The post was heavily armed with cannons, battleships, fortified walls, and other instruments of war. The Portuguese were accused of trafficking by high Mughal officials and due to commercial competition the Mughal-controlled port of Saptagram began to slump. Shah Jahan was particularly outraged by the activities of Jesuits in that region, notably when they were accused of abducting peasants. On 25 September 1632 the Mughal army raised imperial banners and gained control over the Bandal region and the garrison was punished. <laughs> Religious and language tolerance Shah Jahan preached equality among Hindus and Muslims. He introduced various new policies to unite all the religions. As a result, his reign worked for 30 successful years. He used to celebrate all the festivities of Indian origin and tried to converse with every problem. Hindavi, the origin of Hindi language, was introduced for the first time in his court. Realizing that everyone could not speak Persian, he introduced a new court language, that maintained a perfect balanced mixture of Sanskrit and Persian. Ministers Shah Jahan's treasurer was Sheikh Farid, who founded the city of Faridabad. Later life When Shah Jahan became ill in 1658, Dara Shuko Mahal's eldest son assumed the role of regent in his father's stead, which swiftly incurred the animosity of his brothers. Upon learning of his assumption of the regency, his younger brothers, Shuja, Viceroy of Bengal, and Murad Bash, Viceroy of Gujarat, declared their independence, and marched upon Agra in order to claim their riches. Aurangzeb, the third son, and ablest of the brothers, gathered a well-trained army and became its chief commander. He faced Dara's army near Agra and defeated him during the Battle of Samugar. Although Shah Jahan fully recovered from his illness, Aurangzeb declared him incompetent to rule and put him under house arrest in Agra Fort. Jahanara Begum Sahib, Mumtaz Mahal's first daughter, voluntarily shared his eight-year confinement and nursed him in his dotage. In January 1666, Shah Jahan fell ill. Confined to bed, he became progressively weaker until, on the 22nd of January, he commended the ladies of the imperial court, particularly his consort of later years Akbarabadi Mahal, to the care of Jahanara. After reciting the Kalma La ilaha il Allah and verses from the Quran, Shah Jahan died, aged 74. Shah Jahan's chaplain Saeed Muhammad Kanaji and Qazi Kurban of Agra came to the fort, moved his body to a nearby hall, washed it, enshrouded it, and put it in a coffin of sandalwood. Princess Jahanara had planned a state funeral which was to include a procession with Shah Jahan's body carried by eminent nobles, followed by the notable citizens of Agra and officials scattering coins for the poor and needy. Aurangzeb refused to accommodate such ostentation. The body was taken to the Taj Mahal and was interred there next to the body of his beloved wife Mumtaz Mahal. Contributions to architecture Shah Jahan left behind a grand legacy of structures constructed during his reign. 
He was one of the greatest patrons of Mughal architecture. His most famous building was the Taj Mahal, which he built out of love for his wife, the Empress Mumtaz Mahal. Its structure was drawn with great care and architects from all over the world were called for this purpose. The building took 20 years to complete and was constructed from white marble underlaid with brick. Upon his death, his son Aurangzeb had him interred in it next to Mumtaz Mahal. Among his other constructions are the Red Fort also called the Delhi Fort or Lal Qila in Urdu, large sections of Agra Fort, the Jama Masjid, the Wazir Khan Mosque, the Modi Masjid, the Shalimar Gardens, sections of the Lahore Fort, the Mahabat Khan Mosque in Peshawar, the Mini Qutub Minar in Hastsal, the Jahangir Mausoleum, his father's tomb, the construction of which was overseen by his stepmother Nur Jahan and the Shah Jahan Mosque. He also had the peacock throne, takht e taus made to celebrate his rule. Shah Jahan also placed profound verses of the Quran on his masterpieces of architecture. The Shah Jahan Mosque in Thatta, Sindh province of Pakistan, 100 kilometers 60 miles from Karachi, was built during the reign of Shah Jahan in 1647. The mosque is built with red bricks with blue-colored glazed tiles probably imported from another Sindh's town of Hala. The mosque has overall 93 domes and it is world's largest mosque having such number of domes. It has been built keeping acoustics in mind. A person speaking inside one end of the dome can be heard at the other end when the speech exceeds 100 decibels. It has been on the tentative UNESCO World Heritage List since 1993. Coins Shah Jahan continued striking coins in three metals i.e. gold mohar, silver rupee, and copper dam. His pre-accession coins bear the name Karam. <laughs> Full title Shah Jahan's full imperial title was Shahanshah al Sultan al Azam wal Kakan al Makaram, Malik al Sultanat, Allah Hazrat Abul Muzaffar Shahab ud Din Muhammad Shah Jahan I, Sahib i Kiran i Sani, Padshah Ghazi Zilwala, Firdaus Ashiani, Shahanshah e Sultanant ul Hindia wal Mughalia. See also Shah Jahan II Shah Jahan III Wine cup of Shah Jahan Topic Issue Topic Ancestry Topic Notes and references equals 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 notes